so we're on nature watch something something weird happened to me I'm going to go under the shade to talk about it so I went cycling this morning did my usual eight miles came back I had my supplements, I take about 10 supplements in um, lemon, juice, ginger, and um, polypore. Uh, you know, my wonder potion, some of you know about. Never had any problem taking kratom with that. But what I've never done is started drinking alcohol straight away after. Now because I never had my supplements this morning, usually about mid-morning, about 11, I thought, well, no, I'll, I'll take them, uh, just so I don't miss a day. And then I started on my bottle of Newcastle Brown about 15 minutes after. Well, I got a third of the way through this bottle and I just couldn't sit. I just had to go and lie down. Went and lied down on the towel and just felt really drowsy. And then I was looking all around and it was like I was on like three grams of shrooms. I'm like, what the fuck? I couldn't get up off the floor. I was down there on the towel. I was just like, I can't move. Exhausted. I'm like, something didn't agree with the alcohol. Wow. Anyway, whilst I'm then taking some shade under this lime tree, well, this group of lime trees, right? And lime trees, um, they're very perfect places for lots of animals. And so I was standing here and I noticed that there is a a great tit which is frequenting its nest just in that tree trunk there and it didn't seem to bother about me and I'm gonna stand here and just see if it bothers about me being here but she's coming and going very frequently and I shouldn't think we'll have to wait more than about a minute before she's back again. Evidently she's feeding young. And so... I'll just wait a little bit. But up here... Well, I'll show you anyway, whilst we're waiting. You see that there? Now that could be a squirrel's home because of the, all the chewing that's gone on or I don't know whether it could be a woodpecker There are green woodpeckers around here could very well be a green woodpecker and when we look at these knobbly, baubly you know, green limes green limes there's so many little nooks and crannies and at the top where all the, the, the trunk branches off there's lots of hollows and you get bigger birds nesting in there now I'm pretty sure me just standing here a little bit of camouflage we'll see her come back I'm kind of camouflaged in all these leaves all around me. Ouch! Something biting me.
But you know, when we just, we hang around, we just hang around and we just look, then we start to see all this stuff, which we'd never have been acquainted with before. And it's so wonderful and idyllic here for any number of animals. And so... She's over there somewhere. She'll be back. Depends how much patience we've got, huh? So there's a fly hanging around the aperture and it goes in now and again. And so there's something of interest for that. Well, it's taken a long time to find a little bit of a morsel, but she flew two times already whilst I was just hanging around like this. So I don't think it's me that's preventing her from coming back. I could almost stand on my deck chair and have a look in there. You see, because when we become still, when we enter into the kingdom of God, then we see everything. We see God. We see everything in a godlike way. So for those of you that are not familiar with somebody called William Donahue, he's had this series of Bible lectures for many years. I don't know whether he still does it these days. 20 years ago he had his um, heyday, but they're still up online and they are absolutely superb. He talks about the Bible scriptures from a very different perspective. The same perspective I speak from, psychological, philosophical. Nothing to do with you know, that it's all allegory. And he says himself, he says it's just human psychology. There's a bit of movement somewhere. And the world's first cognitive behavioral therapy box. There she is. See her there? She's gonna come down in a minute. There she's getting nearer. Getting nearer, she's got something there, she goes. Wasn't, wasn't that a beautiful, pleasant surprise? Let me see if I can see anything. I... Do 
don't know whether I saw anything, whether we've got it or not on camera, but uh, yeah, so that's beautiful. And because the bird was just chilled with me, does she know me? Has she seen me a million times? Have I been feeding her in my garden? They're a lot smarter than we think, you know. And how many animals, if they were afraid, they wouldn't give the nest away like that. She wasn't bothered. And so I'm pretty sure that a green woodpecker is living in there. It's just the stillness, people. Godliness is in the stillness. And this is what gurus have said for thousands of years. If we could become tranquil, like Mother Nature, we enter into this dripping and draping of ecstasy. And uh, this morning, when I was feeling stoned and I was looking at the trees and it also it all, almost became too much for me it, because this this kind of like love and ecstasy that you feel is so powerful that you couldn't bear any more of it really and I was thinking I don't know if I could stand any more of this I might have to go inside the ecstasy is too powerful I'm like, what did I take? I didn't take, you know, I was thinking about taking three grams of shrooms today. I think, well, you know, because one of these days I will. I'm like, is it today? It's a good job I never. I would have been proper smashed. And the thing is, people, I'm smashed already. I'm already super smashed. Hello? What's your name? Leaf? Really? You're joking. <laughs> I get it. The green man. Yeah. Draped and dripping in ecstasy. Twenty, twenty-two degrees today. Just the world doing its thing. No schools about us yet, because I haven't been talking. I'm only talking really low now, they can't hear me. But later on I'll call them and then I'll film them. So what have we got here? You know, we've got this house of God. Then we've got this beautiful secret garden with all these tombstones, 100, 200 years old, all leaning over and tumbling down and covered in ivy. And Moss and algae. Remnants of the past. And on one of those tombstones down there, it says, Here lies William Exton or something of Narborough Lodge. Like, around here used to be a big deal in the old days when there's only, you know, a few big houses. Because um, what invariably would happen is the local business people would build a big lodge uh, around the place or a tavern or, or something like that to feed or for them to drink within. You know, 
something interesting that British people, you know, predominantly, you might be interested in this, but you know public houses, our pubs. In the Bible, publicans were tax collectors. And in Old English, a publican was a tax collector. And when you look at what publicans do, the massive tax, something like 98% on a pint of beer, it's the most tax anything gets charged on alcohol. And so these pubs are tax collecting joints. Every time you go in them, you pay a massive amount of your hard earned money to the government on tax for your pleasure. Very sinister and cruel, don't you think? You know, for the working class, you get these taverns and uh, places, you know, to convene and, and socialize and, you know, have a few beers and forget how hard you've been working. But you're paying that amount of tax you're paying like a thousand percent over the value of what you're actually drinking. So they're cracking the whip and they're making you work really, really hard down the mines and all that sort of thing. And then when you come out, you see the light of day, you want a few beers, well, they tax you a thousand percent. If that's not sinister and cruel and evil, I don't know what it is, people. But people's minds are close to it, and they just accept it, that, well, oh, beer's always been expensive in a pub. Well, the people should stand up and say that they ain't fucking paying it, and just have a boycott. We ain't going to pubs no more. So, she'll be back again, and I'm going to stand right underneath and to see if she'll come. There she is up there. See, black and white, great tip or cold tip. She's getting nearer and nearer and nearer. Beautiful bird. She goes at the top there. There you go. You see? She's got a bug in her mouth, in the beak. How beautiful is that? It's okay, the coast is clear. You're right, go on. It's only me. I'm the one that feeds you those peanuts that you love so much. Oh, she's come back out. I wonder why she did that. Uh huh. Oh, there's another one, you see. There's two of them, male and female. So she'll be out in a minute and then he'll be in. She's taking her time in there. And he's waiting his turn. She is taking her time in there. Or he. I don't know which one it is now. Oh, they're, they're both going there. Both in there now. There you go, look, see? Beautiful.
Wonderful. Yeah, and we can see that um, there's been a little bit of a pecking around the aperture. And so the one I showed you earlier could be one of these tip houses. I wonder why it takes them so long in there. They've only got to stuff that morsel down the beak of one or two chicks. I think what I'll do is, I'll just go close in. It's taking a long time. What are you doing in there, mate? Interesting. Well, it's a full-time job for the pair of them from dawn till dusk. What is she doing? Well, you'd think there's a back door, wouldn't you? Interesting. You know, it's times like this you start to go a little bit crazy because you think, did I blink? Did I miss? She can't still be in there now. I must have missed something. She's doing arranging some of the nest or something. Well, I, I can't hold my arm up anymore. Come on, dude, you, you gotta come out now. What's happening? Is it siesta time? Well, if anybody knows what's going on in there, put it down in the comments. Hmm. Huh. Well, 
should be wait any longer. We're waiting like 10 minutes now. <laughs> Did I look away for a fleeting second? I don't think I did, did I? I had the camera trained on it all the time. flies in there, the fly just came out. You would have thought, thought that fly would have been grabbed. Huh. Yeah, well, I must have missed something. I mean, you would have thought one of them would have been back by now. Okay. Mission aborted. Mission aborted. I think then, because um, I'm here anyway and I've waited this long, I might as well just keep focused to see. What are you guys saying, huh? What do you guys think? Can you hear that hissing, people? Every tree has its different sound, you know? Depending on their foliage, they all have a different sound that you can discern. Okay, so one of them's back over there in that holly tree. Very interesting that they, um, they don't appear to mind me. Oh, it's a robin. A robin just came down and sat on that tombstone. Yeah, very interesting, they're not too bothered about me. I'm literally just eight feet away. Well, seeing I've stood here so long, I'm going to stand here a little bit longer. No, okay, that'll do me. <laughs> 